Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and this fine looking flannel material you see here is an AXF material. And what is AXF, you may ask? Well, that is what this video is about. So it's a new material type that is supported by Moto 13, 13.1, I think initially now 13.2 has uh, even expanded support for it. And let's uh, just kind of delve into what it is, uh, where you can download some samples and really kind of ask the question, is it uh, useful to your average Moto user? So in terms of what it is, I'm just going to jump over to the X-Rite uh, Pantone site. And if you've heard of X-Rite, you know, they're a um, company that specializes in color science, color calibration, color accuracy, that kind of thing. And they've put forth this um, appearance exchange format, AXF appearance exchange format, file format with the idea that it's going, you're going to be able to scan materials and virtualize as they say materials. So we're just reading from their website here. So the XF uh, file addresses the challenge of real world integration in virtual design by providing a vendor neutral format that allows the full communication of visual appearance in a single editable file in order to improve the virtualization process. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if you are a company with a lot of products and you've got CAD files or maybe you scan in your product, um, you've got the geometry in there. But right now what we do is 3D uh, animators or renderers. We approximate the appearance of materials with um, some sort of baseline general materials in Octane or V-Ray or Moto or whatever. And so we adjust things like roughness and color and specularity to sort of approximate real world materials. And what AXF is doing is it's really scanning in all of these properties. So they're not just scanning in color. They're taking something like uh, this very fancy looking machine here, the TAC ecosystem, the TAC7 scanner right here. You put in a material sample and it really scans all these different attributes, right? Not just color, but also you grab a normal information out of it. You grab uh, specular information, roughness information, anisotropy, um, index of refraction. All of this data is brought into um, this material format, AXF. And you can also, they have some other products for creating material libraries or comparing your uh, virtualized or scanned material with the real world material and it's really aimed at a pretty high-end clients companies with a lot of products so if you're I don't know Nike or BMW and you want to virtualize or create 3d assets of all your real world products um, you want to get your materials as accurate as possible and the idea that just approximating these materials with a, a glossy shader or a um, specular shader in octane or something or moto isn't enough we're going to actually scan these things in so that's the idea behind axf and it's an open format in that i think it's sort of available to anybody who wants to use it i'm not sure it could probably be modified to some degree as well um and it's being supported now in in moto and in, in a bunch of other programs as well i think keyshot supports it as well as uh, v-ray to some extent and uh, so on this page here, you can download a bunch of samples and I'll include the link below. And also you'll notice there's different versions of it. We've got 1.0, 1.1, uh, samples for 1.2, 1.3. I think it goes up to 1.4 or 5 now as well. And I believe the idea behind uh, Foundry is to support everything, but right now they don't support everything you could download here. So unfortunately, these car paint materials, 1.2, 1.3, uh, with clear coat car paint there. Uh, they're not supported in Moto right now. Hopefully they will be um, maybe in the next version. It's sort of unfortunate because I wanted to play with those, but there's still quite a few sample materials in these other libraries. Now, I also, I'm not quite sure about this whole uh, single editable file idea here because when you download these, there is an AXF file, but also this data is stored in 32-bit or floating point EXR image files as well. So it's not really a single file. You can you know, bring these in into Moto in a single file, and I'll show you how that works, but it really seems like it's multiple files there. Um, just jumping over to Photoshop, here's some samples you see. Here's a sort of a textile, right? Uh, silver Pepita, I think it's called. You got normal information. You have specular uh, information, color, or albedo information. Here you've got a metallic material, this sort of metal metal snake material, which is a cool name. But again, it can you know scan metals as well. Um, you know, here's just a sort of a baseline aluminum material that's been scanned in. Looks pretty good. Uh, blue jeans, a basketball material, so like rubber. We've got silk. I've got uh, flannel, of course, my favorite. Laminate red, you know, useful. Orange felt could be useful. Um, there's some cotton. There's some sort of uh, satin. Um, we've got, I don't know, a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, beige leather, 
Uh, there's also like a sort of like um, arch viz type materials like uh, this coarse countertop so you know a lot of stuff um, some more useful than others but let's just see how you work with it in moto and you'll get an idea of what you can do with it so here I've got a bunch of them already loaded in here's flannel and I've got uh, you know you can see it in the viewport as well as the render window and uh, you see there's an AXF uh, material layer at the bottom and there's all these uh, EXR images above I just double click on that you see this is an EXR image for uh, AXF base color so it, they're similar in that you know there's a prefix for the channel type AXF but there's similar channels base color normal specular color specular lobe is a different one uh, Fresnel channel bunch of channels that you're sort of familiar with by name but they're combined differently to create these sort of scan materials uh, if you want to load one up you just go up here and you say add layer custom materials AXF material and you get all these channels here. These are really just tweak channels. So you can actually tweak um, you know, the AXF channels that are brought in. Click import AXF and then you just grab something here. I'll grab, uh, I will grab red laminate. And so hit okay and, and uh, it'll bring in, um, did I hit okay? Yeah, I did hit okay and there it is. So it brings in all these images, right? So AXF base color, you got a normal, we got a specular color, specular lobe, clear coat normal, clear coat IOR. So a lot of different information in here. And if you look at your image folders here, it does put them uh, nicely organized in a little folder in your image list here. So red laminate. Here's all these images. I did notice that you know the files aren't really big. They're just 512 by 512. I'm guessing that the these are just sample files and that you could actually probably scan them in at some you know 4K or some much larger resolution. I'm assuming because 512 is not that big. Um, they are floating points, so there's a lot of data in here. And anyway, so also because this is an EXR image, I'm assuming if you wanted to change this uh, color, you would just actually you know you could go into photoshop and change the color you could also use some of moto's built-in tools to change the color so here we've got the axf diffuse color right here you also have a specular color which is um really just uh it's not like it's a metal so it's just a, a grayscale image there so we don't really need to change that color if you want to change the diffuse color i could add a moto process node so processing process and you just want to make sure it's above the, the layer you're trying to process and then I can, you know, switch the channel to um, AXF, uh, I think, is it diffuse color, base color, that's what it is. So AXF base color, I'm going to process that. So I could just rotate the hue, you know, do whatever here. And I've got a blue laminate. So you can tweak these. It is useful in that way. Um, you can also, for instance, if I just, I'm just going to group these, shift click and control G to group these together. And I'll just call this um, red uh, lamb or something like that, red laminate and put it inside my um, shader ball, which is, whoops, actually, I didn't want to do that. Undo that, unselect the shader ball <laughs> uh, organizational layer. Now I'm gonna group it, call it red lamb. I'll just edit that out, just edit that out. Not really part of the tutorial, but actually I probably won't edit it out. Sorry, keeping it in, keeping it in. Um, okay, so I've got, uh, I've got like aluminum in here. So here's just that metal from earlier. And again, these little, uh, tweak um, channels here on the AXF material layer so I can you know tweak like the specular color multiplier if I want to make this look like a let's say a red adenized aluminum I can tweak that and tweak the base color as well and now I've got like a, a red aluminum right so you can tweak these uh, all, you know the, the normal scale can be tweaked as well so all this stuff can be tweaked and you can also process it and you can also edit um, these images I suppose especially the base color or specular color images in Photoshop to, I suppose, expand your material library. Uh, but beyond that, there's not a lot else there, right? Because, you know, these are all scanned materials and there's a number that you can download from the site, but that's about it. I've kind of scoured the internet and haven't found any others really. So unless you buy one of these uh, machines, which I don't think you're going to do, you're sort of limited to what you can download from the sample library. And it's, you know, not a lot really. So you might have a client that, you know, if you're doing product renders or product animations, your client may have AXF files, and just like they would have a CAD file. So they would give you CAD geometry and they'd also give you AXF files for all the materials. That would be awesome. Uh, speaking of somebody who does a lot of product animation and rendering, if I were able to get AXF files from 
um, my client, I didn't have to remake all the materials or approximate them in Octane or Moto or V-Ray or whatever, that would be super useful. But if you're interested in using scanned materials like this, your best option is probably V-Ray um, because V-Ray has a scanned material library with uh, hundreds of materials and I think they update it all the time. And, um, you know, they're probably using that device to scan them in since it's an open format. I'm guessing the V-Ray scan material library is very similar, at least, to the AXF files here. Um, so that's kind of it. I mean, I'm guessing AXF was supported because somebody who used Moto, a larger company, asked Foundry to support it. So we benefit from that and that we get AXF. But until there's some sort of purchasable library, we're sort of stuck with the uh, materials in the free samples folder. And, you know, like I said, you can you can edit those a little bit. Um, but, you know, it, it's a limited library of, of materials. And unless you're going to buy one of those devices, we're just kind of stuck with that. So that's really what AXF is. That's what it does. Clearly, uh, it makes some pretty nice looking materials. Like there's an orange felt material here I thought was kind of cool. Here it is down here, I'll just turn that on. And like I said, you can you know adjust these um, with some of the Moto nodes here. So I've got a diffuse color and a specular color. And I can, you know, I can add these process channels and um, you know change the base color here. And uh, you know, again, like shift the hue 90 degrees and get a slightly different looking um, felt here and I, I'm getting the orange specular color so I want to duplicate that and put it above specular color and also process the specular color and so I get a fully green felt and that's a nice looking green felt and so if you need felt or some of these other materials that are in the AXF library certainly use them uh, they're at our disposal but you know they're a little bit limited for now but it's nice to see this kind of thing supported in Moto and, you know, maybe this is the future where we, where we will see, you know, these massive scanned libraries, sort of like you see Megascans now. Uh, but Megascans isn't um, scanning the amount of data that this uh, AXF file is supporting. So Megascans, you're getting, you know, uh, glossy and, and roughness or, and, you know, specular and uh, albedo and all that stuff. Normal, glossy and roughness, same thing, really, inverted. But, um but you're still working with the, the BDRF of whatever shader and V-Ray or Moto or, or Arnold or Redshift or whatever that comes with that rendering program where, you know, the AXF file is really bringing in the microstructure and sort of a custom BRDF of, of that physical material. And that's really what sets it apart from, you know, these material approximations that we typically do. In our 3D rendering programs, but you know that's all. That's all I've really got. It's a nice, fine-looking green felt, uh, suitable for a golf course, maybe. And uh, yeah, download them and uh, screw around. It's kind of fun. Yum yum. <laughs>